Hello everyone, this is VGTI, back with even more Half-Life theories. This video will be focusing on the Borealis. The driving question behind the Borealis is what's inside it? That question still hasn't been answered, and maybe it will be answered when Half-Life 3 comes out. But I have a theory on what could be inside it, and I did some research and I haven't seen anyone present this idea yet, so let's get right into it. First of all, I should do a quick recap on what the Borealis actually is, in case some of you don't know. The Borealis was an Aperture Science research vessel, and if you play Portal, that name should sound familiar. Aperture Science is the name of the science company that runs that facility, or used to run that facility, that you're going through in the Portal games. They were also the rival company of the science company that Gordon works for, Black Mesa. Or rather, the company that he used to work for. So, Aperture Science had this research vessel, right? It's called the Borealis, and they were working on an experiment of some promise, or at least that's what Kleiner tells us in Episode 2. However, while Aperture Science was working on this experiment, the Borealis somehow disappeared. No one knew where it went, and it took some of its dry dock with it. In-universe, this was a big topic of speculation among scientific communities. People were always wondering what happened to it, where it went, and became an urban legend of sorts. So of course we find out where it went when we receive that transmission from Judith Mossman in Episode 1. She feels that she may have found the location of the Borealis, and it's somewhere in the Arctic. And that's where we leave it off at. We don't really know much else about it, like what's actually on it, and it's most likely that we'll be going to its location in Half-Life 3. Whatever is on it, it must be something big, because this was a big topic of debate between Isaac Kleiner and Eli Vance in Episode 2. Isaac Kleiner said that we should use whatever is on the Borealis, because it could be advantageous for the Rebels, and we could use it against the Combine. Meanwhile, Eli said that we should destroy whatever is on the Borealis, lest the Resonance Cascade happen again. That's what he was worried about. That's the basic summary of everything we know about the Borealis so far. Many people speculate that whatever is on the Borealis, it must have something to do with the kind of technology that Aperture Science has. We know what kind of portals they use, since we see them all the time in the portal games, thanks to the portal gun. Um, a lot of people speculate that maybe the portal gun is on the Borealis, or some people think that maybe it's some kind of advanced portal gun, or some kind of advanced portal technology that makes even larger portals than the normal portal gun does. However, I don't think it's either of these things. My theory is this. I think Aperture Science was doing some kind of research, and in the process, they found out how to open up portals to other timelines, or other universes. And because of this, the Borealis was involved with the experiment somehow. They had, they made some kind of device that could open portals to other universes, and this device was on the Borealis. However, it was kind of new research, and they didn't really know what they were messing with, so the device malfunctioned, and it teleported the Borealis. Now, I'm gonna make myself clear here. Some people might mistake what I'm saying for what the Combine do. When I say portals to other universes, I'm not talking about what the Combine do. The Combine travel between dimensions, which is entirely different. They travel between worlds. Dimensions like Zen, dimensions like our own planet. Different universes, however, are a different subject altogether. When I say different universes, I'm talking about, like, the multiverse. Now, if you haven't heard of the multiverse theory, it's a pretty common scientific theory about what the universe is or what could actually be going on in the universe. The theory states that there are multiple universes alongside our own, parallel, and that each universe is like the result of a minor or major decision, 
and whenever these decisions are made, they branch off into other universes. If you watched my last Half-Life Theory video, I talked about this and how G-Man and his employers have the ability to exploit the power to use multiple universes and see the outcomes of all decisions. So if you saw that, you might kind of have an idea of what I'm talking about. Or if you know what the multiverse theory is, then good, you're keeping up even better. Now, you might be thinking, but VGTI, where's your basis for that? How do you draw the conclusion that, oh, whatever's on the Borealis has to be something that can open portals to other universes? Where are you getting that from? And no, I am not getting it strictly from my theory from my last video. There's actually evidence from the Portal universe itself that supports my theory. This evidence comes from the Perpetual Testing Initiative. The Perpetual Testing Initiative was a program that Aperture Science was working on, a, a con game, basically. And uh, in real life, it was actually Valve's introduction to level creating in Portal um, and how you share your levels with other players. But in-game, the storyline for the Perpetual Testing Initiative focused entirely on the multiverse. Cave Johnson outright says it in the video for the Perpetual Testing Initiative. He says that Aperture is exploring the multiverse and slipping blueprints for test chambers to other Aperture Science facilities. So, this means that Aperture was testing out the multiverse. They were looking into it, they were experimenting with it. and. It's not too crazy to say that somehow this got involved with the Borealis. They were working on a way to make a device to open up portals to other universes, but this ended up teleporting the Borealis when it went wrong. Now, where did it teleport to? Well, chances are, if there was a device on the Borealis that teleports to other universes, then the Borealis might have gone to an alternate universe and then somehow ended back up into the Arctic. But just think about what that kind of technology could do. I mean, yes, it's unstable because it sounds like Aperture didn't know what they were messing with and that resulted in the Borealis disappearing, but imagine what could be done with that kind of technology in both the Rebels' hands and the Combine's hands. So how does this all connect? Well, like I said, I discussed it in my last Half-Life Theory video, that G-Man and his employers are literally the representations of destiny, and that they have the power to see all alternate universes and all branching paths, and see which one is the best one for their plans. This is what leads to the events of the Half-Life games as a whole, and it sounds like whatever is on the Borealis it has a similar power to the G-Man and his employers. And if the Rebels get a hold of this, then they could most likely win the war somehow. Yes, I know that Perpetual Testing uh, Initiative video uh, is a bit silly. I mean, most things with Aperture Science and Cape Johnson are. But when you factor it into my theory and take the whole multiverse thing seriously and look at it in a different light, it kind of makes sense especially considering what the G-Man has done and everything that's been going on with Aperture and the Borealis. So that's my theory, guys. I'm sure this theory will be downright denied or confirmed when Half-Life 3 comes out because we'll probably find out what's actually on the Borealis. But until then, I'll feel free to speculate. So if you liked my video, like it, leave a comment, or even subscribe to my channel, give it some support, and I will keep making more theory videos and my new explained videos as much as I can. I'd also like to give a big thanks to the people who have been subscribing to my channel for liking my videos and watching them. I really do appreciate it. So my next video is most likely going to be part two of my Kingdom Hearts explanation series, so look out for that. Anyways guys, look forward to my next video, and I will see you all next time.